let's investigate a very interesting property of the Bell states. First, let's consider the column matrix with entries A0 and A1. Let's take the tensor product of this column matrix with another column matrix that has entries B0 and B1. We can evaluate this tensor product, and that's going to give us a column matrix with four entries. And those four entries are A0, B0, A0, B1, A1, B0, and A1, B1. We can put some brackets around here because this is a column matrix. Similarly, we can define uh, some column matrices with entries C0 and C1. And then we can take a tensor product with another column matrix that has entries D0 and D1. And we can evaluate this tensor product, and that's going to give us the terms C0, D0, C0, D1, C1, D0, and C1, D1. And finally, let's put some brackets around here. So here you can notice that there is a pattern with these uh, indices, these numbers over here. First, we have the 0, 0 entry. Then we have the 0, 1 entry. Then the 1, 0 entry. And finally, the 1, 1 entry. These are matrix representations of states. So this is the matrix representation of a two-qubit state. This lives in a four-dimensional Hilbert space. It describes a system consisting of two qubits. But these guys over here, these are systems that consist of a single qubit. So this is a single qubit matrix representation of a state. And over here, we have another single qubit state in its matrix representation. One way of interpreting the values in these matrices is as coefficients of basis states. Anytime you construct a matrix representation of states or operators in quantum mechanics, you have to choose a particular basis. In this video, we are choosing the computational basis. So these are coefficients of the computational basis states. You could label them as 0 and 1. So we have kets. And inside these kets, we have 0 and 1. So that is for a single qubit system. And then we have another single qubit system. And when we take the tensor product, we combine two separate single qubit systems into one larger two qubit system. So we're taking uh, something that lives in a two dimensional Hilbert space, and we're combining it with something that lives in another two dimensional Hilbert space. And the result is something that lives in a four dimensional Hilbert space. These two expressions are, have the same form, which we just have different names for the variables over here. And these variables can, can be thought of as coefficients. So what do I want to do in this video? I want to set these guys equal to the Bell states. And then we're going to find out something very, very special in quantum mechanics. So let's, first of all, set this equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times the column matrix, which has entries 1, 0, 0, plus or minus 1. And this one over here, I'm going to set, set it equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times the column matrix with entries 0, 1, plus or minus 1, 0. Earlier, I said that these guys correspond to coefficients of basis states. If we're working in this four-dimensional Hilbert space, then we can use the two-qubit computational basis. And those two-qubit computational basis states are labeled as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So you can think of these entries as the coefficients of those basis states. Here we have 1 times 1 on the square root of 2, and that is the coefficient of the 0, 0 basis state. And over here, we have plus or minus 1 times 1 on root 2. And that is the coefficient of the 1, 1 basis state. And over here, we're dealing with the 0, 1 and the 1, 0 basis states. And you can see, again, we have plus or minus over here. The reason we have a plus or minus is because we can write this as phi 
plus or minus, and psi plus or minus. These are Bell states. And by using this plus minus notation, we're actually writing down uh, two equations in one. So if you consider the plus case, that, correspo that corresponds to psi plus, and if you consider the minus case, that corresponds to psi minus. The same holds for phi over here. So these are Greek letters, phi and psi, and they are used as a shorthand notation for the Bell states. So we are supposing that this is equal. We are supposing that it is possible to represent these Bell states in a form that tells us that we can break them up into the tensor product of a single qubit state with another single qubit state. Let's see if this is possible. Is this a reasonable thing to suppose? We're going to first need to identify some of these coefficients in the matrices. So let's identify this coefficient over here, or this entry in the matrix, with this entry over here. We have to distribute the normalization factor of 1 over root 2. So we can read this off, and we can see that a0, b0, is equal to 1 on the square root of 2. And a1, b1, that is equal to plus or minus 1 on the square root of 2. Where is this plus or minus coming from? Well, it's coming from this plus or minus over here. So this entry is equal to this entry. And this entry is equal to this entry. And now let's have a look at the middle two entries. We have a0, b1, and a1, b0. Both of these are equal to 0. That's because we have zeros over here in this column matrix. Let's do a similar thing for this equation. We can identify that C0, D0 is equal to 0, and C1, D1 is equal to 0. That's because we have zeros uh, as coefficients of 0, 0, and 1, 1. And that is exactly what we have over here as well. These guys are coefficients of 0, 0, and 1, 1. Now, what about the mixed states? Well, if we have C0, D1, that is equal to 1 on the square root of 2. That's what we have over here. And we have plus or minus 1 on the square root of 2. That is equal to C1, D0. So C1, D0 is equal to plus or minus 1 on the square root of 2. Can you see some problems that could arise? Let's have a look at the conclusions we can make from these equations and see if they are reasonable conclusions. Over here we see that we have one variable, a0, and another variable, b0. We're taking the product, and we're getting a non-zero value. So if you take the product of two variables, and you get a non-zero value, that means these guys cannot be equal to zero. It's exactly the same conclusion we can make from this equation. We have something, uh, we have a variable over here, and we're multiplying by another variable, and we get something non-zero. That means these guys cannot be equal to zero. If they were equal to zero, then we would expect to see zero on the right-hand side. Now let's have a look at these equations. Here we have the product of a0 and b1, and that gives us zero. From this equation, we can conclude that one of these variables has to equal zero. And that's exactly the same as this equation over here. We have to conclude that one of these variables has to be equal to zero in order for us to get zero on the right-hand side. Both of them could be equal to zero, that would satisfy the equation, but at least one of them has to be equal to zero. Otherwise, we would get a non-zero value over here. But that is a direct contradiction to our conclusions from these equations. These equations tell us that all uh, of these variables, a0, b0, a1, and b1, they have to be non-zero. But over here, we're, we're, we have a complete contradiction where we have to conclude that at least one of these guys and at least one of these guys is equal to zero. So both of those statements cannot be true simultaneously. That means we have a contradiction and this equation over here is not valid. It is not possible to express these Bell states as a tensor product of a single qubit state with another single qubit state. This property is known as entanglement and it is essential in quantum mechanics. We can make a similar observation with these Bell states over here. Have a look at what these equations are telling us. They are telling us that one of these guys has to be equal to zero. 
Both of them could be equal to zero, and that would give us zero, or at least one of them has to be equal to zero. But if both of them are non-zero, then their product is going to be non-zero, and then we would have a contradiction. So that is what these two equations are telling us. But down here, we have the product of these guys and the product of these guys, and they are giving us non-zero values. So that means they cannot, one of these guys cannot be equal to zero. Otherwise, we would have zero occurring over here. So again, we have a contradiction. So for all four of the Bell states, over here we have two cases, over here we have two cases, in total there are four Bell states. For all four of these Bell states, it is not possible to write them as this decomposition of a single qubit state tensor product with another single qubit state. So that is why these states are considered to be entangled. This is entanglement. And there's a lot more nuance associated with entanglement, and we'll go into that in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. But this video has served as an introduction as to why these Bell states are so special. These four Bell states, they form an orthonormal basis, and all of them are entangled. So you have entangled states, and they're also an orthonormal basis for a two qubit system. Now, those are some very interesting properties, and they are incredibly useful in quantum information. We will see more videos like this in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find all those videos if you click over here.